This is going to be an introduction to sort of theatre studies at, um, at Glasgow, and this is really to give you a little bit of information about both the structure and content of our programmes, but maybe also the ethos of what it would be like to, to work and study with us. So we um, are part of um, um, a very large organisation, and I think it's sort of important to understand how theatre studies fits within like the School of Culture and Creative Arts and part of the College of Arts, because that's what you get access to, that's what you become part of. So we're going to start with a brief introduction to theatre studies at Glasgow and to Glasgow's theatre scene, and me and Simon will do that, and then we'll talk you through the three programmes. So I'll talk to you about theatre studies and playwriting and dramaturgy, and then I'll pass over to Simon to talk about theatre performance practices, and then again we'll do a kind of Q&A at the end. So, um, as I already said, we're part of the College of Arts. So, the College of Arts at the University of Glasgow is sort of very well ranked, very well recognised internationally. We are sort of one of the Scotland's, one of the UK's ancient institutions, and that's sort of recognised in the um, sort of um, that's expressed perhaps in the facilities and resources that we have. So some of the kind of collections that we have here at the University of Glasgow, which are particularly relevant to maybe your studies are things like the Scottish Theatre Archive, which is a huge and sprawling historical and contemporary collection of materials, um, and really kind of covering a huge wide range of, of organisations. Things like National Theatre Scotland have their archival collection in there, but also we have the collections of individual artists, people like Adrian House, who was a fellow of the department and was sort of a, a world leading artist when it came to making one-to-one -one and intimate performance. And so as part of the College of Arts, you're joining a really sort of really huge postgraduate community of taught and research students. I think we're something like over 800 postgraduate taught students at the moment. But theatre studies is the thing that you're here to hear about. We're just one of the longest established theatre studies programmes in the UK. And I think what characterises our work is that we're a community of academics and researchers and writers and practitioners. Um, a lot of us wearing more than one hat. So Simon maybe will talk to you about his background in uh, as a practitioner. As a, and certainly I came into academic, academic world from a background in improvisation and in working as a comedy producer some time ago now. But our sort of community of... Um, researchers and teachers and practitioners were really heavily embedded in the Scottish theatre and performance scene and we're really sort of proud and glad that some of the people who are um, leaders in Scottish theatre are strongly attached to the department so people like Jackie Wiley who's now the artistic director of National Theatre Scotland um, was once an undergraduate with us some time ago now but it's someone with whom we still have a really close uh, relationship and I'll maybe say a little bit more about that later but um, we're I think we're really fortunate to have really strong, positive, um, kind of dynamic relationships with, with Scottish theatre and that we see ourselves as continually in conversation with the professional scene around us. So our approach then to sort of teaching is, is sort of underwritten by deep critical engagement with a whole range of different forms and practices of theatre. So we try really very hard not to have a fixed house style or preferred set of theatre practices, that we're always committed to theatre and performance in its multiple sense. There are, very, um, there are varied practices and varied histories, which are sometimes in competition with each other, and they emerge from particular communities of practice and different cultures of practice as well. So one thing that we're kind of in the process of and which we're committed to is really making sure that our programme recognises and um, reflects the international landscape of both our students and also theatre performance more broadly. So this means a commitment to practice, theory and history and the kind of complicated ways they speak to each other and in particular to practice as research. So this is the idea that practice can both ask and answer questions as a form of research of, of thinking in its own right. And one of the ways that's expressed is through two research hubs which are connected to theatre studies. One focused on dramaturgy is critical practice and the other focused on ecology, heritage and performance, so they are the lap. And we have a really lively seminar series and events calendar um, of kind of guest speakers coming up as well as seminars and workshops. Uh, before I talk about the Theatre and Performance Practices Masters, um, just say something about Glasgow. Uh, and the city that you will be studying and, and living in probably if you if you come here to join us. Um, first of all, it's a huge city. Um, uh, we have a, a, a kind of bantering, sometimes critical relationship with Edinburgh, who is a, which is officially the first city in Glasgow, in, in first city in Scotland. Uh, we regard ourselves as the first city in Scotland. Um, it's rather like the Liverpool, Manchester or the Sunderland, Newcastle um, uh, hostilities, if you like, um, but they're usually friendly. The, there's a serious point here is that you are 40 minutes on the train uh, from Edinburgh. And so you have almost like two cities for the price of one. And of course, if you come 
uh, to us, you'll be working over, let's say you come in this autumn, uh, you'll be coming, uh, you'll be working over next summer, uh, which will coincide uh, with the Edinburgh Festival. And um, that's obviously a, a huge attraction. Has to be said that probably taking the whole year that there's more on in Glasgow uh, than there is, there is actually in Edinburgh. Um, and as Steve has said, we're a long-standing department and um, we're very proud that we have produced, so to speak, uh, a number of very um, prestigious alumni who are now in, in different uh, positions. The most obvious one, I suppose, at the moment is Jackie Wiley, who used to run uh, an extraordinary uh, arts centre and club called The Arches, which sadly closed down about six years ago. That's another story. But if you grew up, if you grew up near Glasgow, you may know of The Arches. Um, Jackie is now the director, artistic director of National Theatre of Scotland. And as Steve said, we have very close links with them um, in, in all sorts of ways. Um, if you're thinking of definitely think you're coming here, just uh, Google the National Theatre of Scotland to see what sort of beast it is. It's a very dispersed model of a national theatre, not like the huge concrete building uh, on the South Bank in London. Its work goes on in partnership with lots of other theatre companies across Scotland. And that's a very healthy uh, and potentially very exciting uh, model for a national theatre. Now in Glasgow itself, we have a number of art centres and, and, and theatres many of which we have uh, long-standing relationships with. Uh, in terms of art centres, there's the tr Tramway. I don't know whether you'd actually call Tramway an art centre, but it is a visual art centre, the home of Scottish Ballet, which is next door, uh, and three or four um, performance spaces. Um, fabulous place to, to hang out and to see work. Close into the centre of the city is the Centre for Contemporary Art, the CCA, um, which offers a range of, of artistic and cultural activities. Um, there are, there's the iconic Citizens Theatre uh, just across the river in what used to be called the Gorbals. I don't know if it still is called the Gorbals now, uh, which has been quite uh, dark for about three years, not simply because of COVID, but because of a massive refurbishment. And there's a theatre, a small theatre, which often uh, promotes new writing called the Tron and uh, a kind of artist led building community called the glue factory which is just up the road from us so there's a it's it's it's, it's a fantastic city to to live in as steve and i would agree i think it's also a, a, a really good city to teach theater or to be a student of theater because of, of the links i've just described and the kind of breadth and wealth of activities uh, that are uh, uh, that, that happen across the year. In Edinburgh, apart from the festival, of course, we have links with the Traverse Theatre and the Lyceum. Uh, the artistic director of the Lyceum is David Gregg, who's worked with our, my colleague, our colleague Graham Etoff, who's a full-time member of staff here. They have very close links. Um, and also we have close links with the Playwright Studio, which is a Scottish-wide organisation, but based in Glasgow. Um, I, I could... Um, rant on for ages but I think that's that's enough for the moment to give you a, a sense. Um, okay so um, I'll start off by talking to you about the MLIT Theatre Studies programme. So the kind of the key um, kind of the defining characteristic of MLIT Theatre Studies is its flexibility. So you start with a core course which is in uh, research methods in theatre studies and theatre performance studies but the majority of the programme is taken up by your choice of elective courses and these are chosen from across theatre studies from across the School of Culture and Creative Arts and across the College of Arts. So it's kind of literally dozens, if not probably hundreds of options which are open to you. Now, there's obviously a little bit of pragmatism there that you can't be in two places at the same time. So timetabling is something we have to work out. And some classes do have um, sort of caps on, on, on class size. But the principle is that you work with one of the, the, the staff team here, someone like me, to design a programme which reflects your interests. So this is a programme which is often bringing together um, a really diverse range of influences. So you might study dramaturgy or some kind, uh, some historical theatrical practices with us, but then you might be going and studying um, 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 uh, a European language or um, a world language somewhere else in the university. 
philosophy, you might be taking an option in history of art, it's, um, you might be taking an option in philosophy or, um, or in, in sociology. So that is a, it's a really flexible program and pretty much everyone who takes it um, ends up with a sort of bespoke program. A little bit of the challenge of that program is then us working at um, a sense of like your path, your kind of a coherent path through that program. So you're not just doing six slightly random things and then walking out the door again, that you are doing something which serves your interests and also serves your overall goals for the program. Um, and so, as I say, during if you were to, if you're interested in that program, the process is that we send you lots of information uh, during the summer months, sort of in, in June, July and August, depends on timing changes a little bit every year. Um, and we get you to sort of identify provisionally what you're interested in doing. And then you sit down and have a conversation with me or another member of the staff team for us to then like firm up that program for you to start in September. There's then also a little bit of wiggle room during the course of the year when you realize maybe your priorities or interests have changed, which is sort of natural as you encounter the actual act of study, then you might um, realize that, uh, that you want to do more of one kind of thing but also you might realize that that one course is just not for you and we try and accommodate those, those kinds of changes so that course sort of runs alongside and overlaps a little bit with playwriting and dramaturgy and so the distinguishing feature here of the emlet and emlet playwriting and dramaturgy program is this joint focus so we were the first program, I think I'm right in saying that, which allowed you to study playwriting and dramaturgy at the same time. So most other institutions, and I think other people have now caught up with this slightly, most other institutions were asking you to be to study playwriting or dramaturgy. And for us, it's always made sense that you should be able to study them at the same time. So this is uh, the program, the structure of this program is that you start with research methods, this sort of shared course with uh, theatre studies, um, while also undertaking um, uh, training in playwriting practice. And that's a course which is led in the first semester by a professional playwright, supported by um, uh, guest speakers who come in and run the occasional workshops. So that's another point of contact with National Theatre Scotland, actually Lisa Gallagher, who's there. Um, uh, um, I guess she's there. I mean, she's probably their in-house dramaturg. I think she's possibly the only full-time professional dramaturg in Scotland. Lots of the other ones are on a contract basis. Um, but Lisa comes in to talk about the work she does in supporting and developing new writing um, with, the, with the National Theatre Scotland team. Um, and that runs alongside a course which is interesting you to, um, in interesting you to, introducing you to uh, histories and theories of dramaturgy. And this is, as I say, it's kind of a historical arc to it, but is intended to kind of open up and pluralize what we mean when we talk about dramaturgy. So maybe this is sort of trying to, hopefully this is, gives an example of our sense of not having a fixed house style about this is the only singular correct way to do dramaturgy. That doesn't interest us. We would much rather explore six, eight, 12 different approaches and think about what they have to offer us, um, both critically and creatively in, for different kinds of projects and in different kinds of contexts, and maybe working uh, with and for different kinds of audiences. So in the second half of that program, um, we uh, engage with contemporary dramaturgical practices and thinking a little bit more about production dramaturgy. And at that stage, you kind of get to specialise slightly, either taking an advanced course in playwriting, which leads to the creation of a full length, uh, full -length play, um, or to take um, what we call the dramaturgy placement. And this is a work based placement where you go out and you work with a company or an institution in Scotland, sometimes further afield, but nearly always in, in Glasgow. Um, um, working with them um, on a kind of specific project, which is agreed with the kind of the workplace coordinator. So that is um, a kind of work placement. We have had enormous success, I think, with like hybrid versions over the last few years because of COVID, but we're now going back to in-person placements again, um, just because we know that that's really important and that's often what you are you are looking for. The obvious proviso there is that when all of the in-person and like all of the in-person stuff we do is sort of couched in the usual sensible precautions around safety and whatever the public health guidance is at the time. Um, uh, we have a real sense of like responsibility and care for, for, for each other and for you, hopefully, as a community of students. While also knowing that you will make your own choices because you're adults. <laughs> but, you know, if we're sending you out into the workplace, we do obviously have a duty of care there. Finally, both of those programs conclude with a thing called the Independent Research Project, or the IRP. And this is your major dissertation project, which normally uh, takes place between sort of May and the end of the academic year in August. And this is a major original piece of research, often emerges from the research training you've undertaken at the start of the year, but it's a thesis project on the topic of your choosing. 
So we ask you to sort of outline a research project sort of actually around this time of uh, around this time of year. I think our current students are, are thinking about it at the moment and are due to submit something to me in April. Um, and then we pair you up with a staff supervisor who works with you to support you through the project. And the exciting thing about the IRP, apart from the fact that it's your opportunity to identify a thing you want to work on at scale, is that it can take a range of different forms. So it can be a traditional written dissertation, like a thesis, but it can also be, be a piece of practices research. And that itself can take a range of different forms. So some people um, have had enormous success creating uh, dramaturgy packs um, for, for productions, which have gone out to, which are intended to go out to audiences or to travel with touring productions. There are other people who've devised um, kind of theatre and education workshop programs and thought about the supporting materials for those. Um, and other people have developed um, full length plays um, um, as research acts. And with all of those practice based research, they're always accompanied with some kind of critical framing statement, which allows us to understand like the rigor and the quality of your thinking that's underpinning your kind of creative uh, practice as well. Um, so if you think about it, if you're on the playwriting program, this is actually a course where if you wanted to, you could write a short play in the first semester, you could write a full length play in the second semester, and then write a third full length, a second full length play, a third play as part of your, your, um, your IRP, your, your independent research project over the summer. And some, some people do indeed do that. At the same time, this is enormous flexibility that you can like pick and choose um, in respect of like what interests you and also what you realize are your tastes and interests actually as the program unfolds. So we do try and be as flexible as possible in accommodating that. I will now at that point hand back over to Simon to talk about, about theatre and performance practices um, and then maybe we can say a few words about how they touch each other and then open up for some questions. Simon, back to you if that's okay. Um, yeah, thanks Steve. Um, some of the things you've said already apply to those of you who might, who are most interested in theatre and performance practices and who may come to us for that programme. I mean, two, two obvious things to say uh, at the beginning. You will be a community within theatre and performance practices. And for example, this year we have 15 students, which is a healthy, very healthy number. But you'll also be part of that wider community of three programmes, which are separate, which overlap. And there are, as Steve said, I think there are, there are at least two courses uh, where you will all work together, certainly with the playwrights and dramaturgs, the um, contemporary dramaturgy course, uh, runs in January to March and the research methods course. So you're a part of a series of overlapping communities, um, if you like. Um, I'm going to call it TPP. Uh, it was set up um, uh, seven or eight years ago by myself, my colleagues, Mitty Donald and Dee Hedden. And the thinking behind it essentially was that there was a big gap in, in Scottish uh, provision for people who are either young in years or young in experience, or maybe not so young in, in, in either sense, who wanted to develop their practice, wanted a year to deepen, to explore, to experiment, or maybe even to find their practice uh, in a supportive learning environment. Nowhere else in Scotland then, and still today, offers a similar kind of, uh, similar kind of course. So the first impulse was to see what we could offer for Scottish theatre and performance practitioners. Almost immediately, it became an international programme as well. And every year, um, a third to a half, roughly, you can never quite anticipate how many international students there will be. So uh, about a half will be Scottish-based students and the rest will be from across the UK, uh, from across Europe and across the world, indeed. Um, it's a program uh, like playwriting and dramaturgy where you're working as much through practice. You're not just sitting and reading books and listening to, to um, lectures and going to seminars. You're developing your own practice. You're learning through doing in a supportive guided environment where your tutors, if you like, are that cliche of critical friends. Uh, we're not going to tell you how to make theatre, but we're going to respond to what you propose. Um, a lot of the staff in the team either still are or have been professional theatre makers and, and performers. I worked for 12 years in the field of movement theatre, physical theatre, was a practitioner, was a performer and director um, and a kind of dramaturge at times. And I still, I, I've kind of ceased doing that. 
um, although I actually regard my lectures as sort of performative physical theatre events in some ways or my teaching. Um, we are all, we're, we're all performing like that. Um, I actually have a deep background in sociology, which I think is quite helpful, but that's another, that's another story. Um, so it's learning by doing, but because it's university, we ask you to think, we ask you to reflect about the doing. Uh, we ask you to write critically in response to the work that you are making or have made. Um, and a good sort of two thirds, I won't bore you to death now with the sort of credit ratings of each course, but two thirds of your year with us on TPP will be making your own work, uh, um, either with a course tutor who guides you, uh, or with a particular supervisor and a mentor. Steve talked about the, the IRPs for theatre studies and playwriting and dramaturgy. In, in TPP, we call them uh, practices research projects. And in most universities, almost all universities, um, postgraduate courses end with the dissertation. This is our version of a dissertation. It's a practice-based dissertation uh, where you make work. You might make work with other people. You might draw in two or three musicians, for example, um, and you will be assessed as a director or as a performer or, or as both. Um, you don't have to make a performance. You could make a performance lecture. You could run a workshop uh, and that will all be negotiated. Um, I'm starting to do that with the current cohort at the moment. There are two courses um, which Steve has already mentioned, research methods and contemporary dramaturgical practices, where you will sit, so to speak, metaphorically or literally side by side with playwriting uh, and dramaturgy students. And also for the research methods, new PhD students. And that again helps to embroil you in that kind of community of postgraduate learners uh, that we have, this, we have here at Glasgow in theatre studies. Um, Again, as with playwriting and dramaturgy into a certain slightly different way, theatre studies, you have, the, you have one space, if you like, uh, where you have an option. You can take a course from almost anywhere, uh, timetabling permitting from across the College of Arts, or you can do a work placement. And Steve has already spoken about those. But this is interesting development, which we can kind of mention now. We're about to launch uh, a new course which will be on stream I'm pretty sure by the time you get here in September if you do come here uh, called professional practice and this is the kind of brainchild of uh, my colleague Graham Etoff um, and that will be available as a, as a, another option and it's sort of orientating you to the opportunities and the difficulties and the challenges and the skills that you need when you leave the course and to be out there in the industry in the world of theatre making. And we're very, it, it, it promises, I think it's gonna be a very popular course mm -hmm. and a very important course. Mm -hmm. It's not just instrumental, it's asking you, it's giving you practical opportunities, practical experiences, but also inviting you to think critically about those. Um, final thing to say, and I could go on, I'm aware of time, is that if you come to TPP, you'll be taught by many members of the Theatre Studies team, not all of them, but many members of the Theatre Studies team, plus visiting uh, tutors who are professional practitioners. And one of the kind of things we're most proud of and pleased with that when you do the, the practice as research project, not only will you have an internal supervisor, you'll have a professional mentor. Uh, we managed right at the start of the program to generate enough of a budget to pay professional, well-respected uh, practitioners to work with you as a mentor, as you're making your work for the practice as research project. Uh, and students find that a, a really exciting and, and, and enjoyable and stimulating and rewarding project. I think that's probably all I should say at the moment. I think we should leave you to um, uh, post questions to us. Yeah, Unless yeah. I've, I've missed anything obvious out, Steve. Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I just like to, I mean, so just the overview for all of the three programmes is that they, that there is a sort of, um, there, there is this sort of, shared structure which is to do with the first chunks of the year or taught courses and they all so the first basically semester one and semester two running through to to march are the taught courses and you normally take about six taught courses with varying credit weightings and then there's the easter holidays and then we come back and then 
the final months of the of the of the degree are spent either on the practices research project or the independent research project. So that maybe gives you a sense of how the tempo of the course runs over the year. Um, but yeah, that's it. So one, one thing I should have oh, yeah. made maybe it's it's obvious and implicit uh, in what I've been saying, but the main sort of pulsating heart of the TPP program is devised work. It's you as the authors or co-authors of of the work that you want to make the performance you want to make and then you will choose the kind of languages of theater and performance which most work for you the language of the written word the language of technology the language of the body the language of the site outside the university and so on but the main thrust is is devising uh, and we give you through the contemporary devising course, which starts when you first arrive, uh, a kind of foundation. Many of you will have done devised work, but we extend that and we deepen that foundation. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. No worries, that's perfect. Okay, so we have just thrown a huge amount of information at you, but hopefully we've also communicated a bit of our sort of enthusiasm about the program. Um, I've worked in a few different places, and I'm really sort of there's there's um. Yeah, the, 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 the programs at Glasgow, I think, are great, but maybe I would say that anyway. But I think it's the, the community at Glasgow, both in the theatre studies department, but also the extended kind of community of, of theatre and performance across the city. As Simon said, it is a big city, but it's also not a huge city. It's not a London scale city. It is a city where there are neighbourhoods where you feel like there is a genuine sense of community, where it doesn't feel like you are completely lost in a massive sprawling city. Um, it's a city that you can like cycle across in an hour. It's a nice scale of living. Um, has the advantages of, of like a big city without the, the, the disadvantages of being swamped. Um, by millions of people living as your neighbours. Um, maybe that's what you're after, but you know, that wasn't ever for me. Now we're blathering. I'm blathering anyway. So let's point, stop at that moment. What I will do is I will stop the recording. Or